In this tutorial, we are going to discuss the preparation of images for use in your Rapid Weaver project, and we're going to primarily focus on the basics of optimizing images. And when we talk about images, we're talking about photos or graphics that you have acquired one way or another and that you want to use in your website. And Rapid Weaver can handle images of pretty much any size, dimension and file size. But that being said, it's ideal if you optimize and resize images before placing them into your Rapid Weaver file. And there are a couple of reasons for that. One is that when you save images into your Rapid Weaver project, those images get added into the project file, which is the bundle of all of the files that make up your website. And as you add more images, that file size will increase. You can go into the finder to find the size of your project file, or you can do a command I to get info, and that will show the project file size here. So as you add images and other media, that file size will continue to increase, and that's okay, but the goal is to keep this file size as small as you can while still adding all of the content that you want. And so optimizing your images before putting them into your project file is a way to accomplish that, especially if you're going to be adding a lot of photos or images to your project. Another reason that you want to optimize your images is because that will in improve the speed with which your website displays your content. The last thing you want to do is make your visitors wait while a lot of photos download on their browser. And so by optimizing the photos first, you can eliminate that problem. And it also helps for SEO, for search engine optimization, to um, speed up the download speed of your pages. And so optimizing your images can help you do that as well. So let's look at a couple of basic ways of modifying and optimizing images for your website. And one of the most basic ways is simply by resizing a photo. And so let's double click and open up a photo that I have here. This is a very large image and I actually am going to have to zoom out a bit just so you can see it all on the screen. I'll position my preview browser inside here. And so this image is very, very large. And we can see just how large it is by going to Tools in the menu and then visiting the Adjust Size option. We'll change our dimensions to pixels, and that gives us a width and a height. So what we can see here is that our width is 2,560 pixels wide, and our height is 1,440. Now what we need to consider here is how large of an image can our website support? To get that answer, we can go to our Rapid Weaver project. And if we go inside of the inspector into the styles tab, we can look and see what the content width is set in the theme. Now, most themes will have a content width setting and you can see what that is set to here. In this case, it's 960 pixels. So what that tells me is that content that is wider than 960 pixels will not be displayed in full. So there's no reason to have any content added to this website that's larger than 960 pixels wide. So what that tells me immediately is that I can go here to my image and adjust this down to 960 pixels right away. Now this is really the first and most basic step of optimizing an image because as soon as we change the size of the image, it's going to also adjust the file size. So what we can see in preview is that the image is now 118 kilobytes in size and it was 488 kilobytes before I resized it. So you can see a significant reduction in file size simply because I adjusted the size of the image. Now when you adjust the width of a photo or an image, you want to make sure that these um, items width and height are linked. And you can see that they are. So when I adjust the width, it automatically adjusts the height. So that ensures that the proportions stay the same. And so you wanna make sure that happens as well. So I'm gonna say okay here. And I'm going to actually view this at 100%. So I'm going to go to view actual size and that scales it up. So this is the full size of the image. I could drop this straight into my Rapid Weaver project as is, and it would be just fine. Of course, I'd want to save it first, and then that would be all I needed to do. Now let me close out of this image, and I want to show you another scenario. I'm going to open up two images. This one, which is kind of a landscape and this one, which is a portrait photo. Now, the purpose of showing you these two photos is that they are different orientation. This one is landscape, as mentioned. This one's in portrait view. 
And if you're going to be adding photos into a photo gallery, in most cases, it's ideal if the images are the same dimensions. And that's going to be an issue for me here in this scenario because I've got one that's landscape and one that's portrait. So I have a couple of options. One is to create separate galleries, one gallery that contains only landscape oriented photos, another gallery that only contains portrait oriented photos, or if I want to combine all of them together into one gallery, then it's likely that I'm going to need to crop in order to get these images to be of the same or a similar dimension. And so in this case, what I would do is start off by looking at the um, landscape photo here. And I'm going to go view its size. So I'm going to go tools, adjust size. It's 800 pixels wide. And that is OK, because it's going to fit inside of my theme. Now I want to go look at this image. I'm going to see that it is 536 pixels wide. So already I've got an image here that is much less wide than this one. So the first thing I want to do is match this image to this width. So I'm going to come in to the tools, adjust size. And I saw that this one had a width of 536. So I'm going to adjust this one down to 536 as well. So now it has an equal width as this image to the right. But now I need to make this image have an equal height as this one. Now I cannot come in and go to tools, adjust size in this case because that's just going to shrink the entire image, including the width. I want to leave the width the same, but remove some of the height. And so to do that, what I'm going to do is scale my window a bit. And then I want to drag this box and position it on the photo. And before I go into that, let's review one more time the size of this image. Let's go to Tools Adjust Size. We can see that the height is 358. We already know that this image has a width of 536. So all we need to do is make sure that this image also has a height of 358. So I'll cancel out, come back here and drag. And you can see in the bottom right corner, as I drag, that I get the dimensions. So I'm going to go all the way full width. And then I want to go to 358. And there I am. So you have to just real carefully adjust the position of your cursor to get the exact dimensions. You can let go of your button at that point and then you can drag to reposition that box where you want it to go. So I want to get some of the field and some of the sky in this photo. And so I'm just going to stop it there. And then I'm going to go to Tools and Crop. So I've cropped this image. And now if I go to the Tools Adjust Size, I can see that it's 536 by 358. And then this image is also 536 by 358. So these images are now the exact same size. I can save them both, and they're both ready to be added into my project. So let me close this out, and we'll look at another scenario. Let's say that you have a lot of photos or images that you want to add to your website. And let's say that they are already all of the same dimension, but they're all very large, and you need to scale them down to a smaller size. What you can do is use a bulk editing tool such as this application. This is called Photo Bulk. It's available in the Mac App Store. It's very inexpensive and it's very handy. And so what I'm going to do is simply highlight in my finder the images that I want to use. So I'm going to hold down my shift key and use my arrow key to highlight all of those. And then I simply need to drag them all into this space. It tells me that six files have been added. And at this point, I need to tell Photo Bulk what to do with these images. So I'm going to click on the resize option. And I want to resize by width. And I know from looking at my theme that they need to be no larger than 960 pixels. So let's say I want them to all be 600 pixels because I don't need them to use the full width of the page. So I would assign 600 for the width. And that will resize all of the images to 600 pixels wide. In addition to that, I may want to look at the Optimize menu. We can choose to optimize these. It's going to say Optimize JPEG only. All of these are JPEG files. They have the extension .jpg. And so that would work just fine. Or I could say optimize JPEG and PNG only if I have PNG files. And we'll talk about those in just a moment. So there's a couple of options there that let you target specific file types. In any case, the JPEG only will work because these are all JPEGs. And at this point, I can adjust the slider for how much I want to optimize these images. So there's a minimum setting, what's called an optimal setting, and then a maximum setting. So basically what this means is when you adjust the slider to the far right, it's going to optimize this image as much as possible, reducing the file size as much as it can. The minimum optimization will reduce the file size by less, 
but retain a higher quality. So as you adjust the optimization slider here, there's going to be some reduction of quality of the image when you export it and when you um, optimize it. So you may want to play with these settings and look at the results to figure out exactly what the best optimization method is. I would recommend somewhere around the middle. And when you've done that, then you can click Start. And it's going to ask you where you want to save these. And so I'm going to save them into my Pictures folder. And it looks like I'm receiving a message that PhotoBulk is in demo mode. I've actually purchased it, but I have not yet entered the activation code on this machine, which is why I'm getting this message. But needless to say, once you've purchased it and activated it, it will process as many photos as you add. And it will do it very quickly and place them all inside of a folder. And so I'll go ahead and say OK. That's created a new folder inside of my pictures folder where my photos were located, and it's called Resize Plus Optimization. So the folder name will um, indicate what has been done to the images. We'd go inside and we would find our image. And so we would see it in a new size and optimized, and we would get the resulting file size here. So you could compare the file size between what's in this folder and the original image. So this is 39 kilobytes. If I go back, I will find that this one was 172 kilobytes. So it has significantly reduced the file size of the image. So PhotoBulk or a similar application works great when you want to bulk process a number of photos all at one time to adjust the file size, I'm sorry, the dimensions and the file size using the optimization option, optimization option here. Now, if you need to crop images, PhotoBulk will not do that. And so we want to go through the cropping uh, tool in preview like we looked at a few minutes ago. And finally, before we conclude this video, I want to briefly discuss image formats. We've already discussed JPEG. This is a typical um, web uh, image type. It, you would usually have an extension JPG or JPEG, and that is a JPEG file. There is another type of image called a PNG, and if we open up that, I've got a file here. We can see the file extension .png, and this is my logo for Rapid Weaver Classroom. And you'll notice that in preview, when we open it, that it has this gray background. This is actually a transparent image, meaning that we can put this image on top of any background color, and that background color will show through, and this image will sit on top. So if you need to have a transparent image, then it needs to be a .png file and it needs to be set for transparency. So if you're going to be purchasing or downloading images from some resource, and if you need them to be transparent to put on top of a colored background, then you will need those to be in PNG format if that's available. Let me show you what would happen if this was a JPEG. I'm going to go to File, Export, and I'm going to choose to save it as a JPEG. So I'll save that, and then I will open up that saved JPEG file. And you can see here that it now assigns a white background behind the image. So if I were to place this JPEG on a colored background on my website, then what we would get is this big white box behind the image, behind the logo. And that's not ideal in a lot of situations. And so especially for website logos or any kind of image that sits on top of a colored background, if you don't want a big white square, then you would need to have an image that is in a PNG format. Photos typically would not need transparency such as this one, because they go edge to edge on all four sides. And so a JPEG is perfectly fine in that case. And it is ideal because a JPEG file will typically be smaller than a PNG. So if you have a PNG document that is not transparent or that you don't need to be transparent, you can go into preview, open up that file, and go to File Export and save it as a JPEG instead of a PNG. And you can even adjust the quality slider here, which is another way of optimizing your file to reduce the file size. And you can see a preview of what that's going to do. Whenever you optimize your images, you always want to open those images up after the optimization. Take a look at the quality and make sure that it's to your satisfaction. And then once you've settled on an optimization quality, then you can go ahead and drop those images into your Rapid Weaver file. So with that, we will conclude this tutorial.